Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Celtic origins of Halloween. You know, I don't really know how Halloween got its start, but if I had to make a guess, um, I would say it was probably some sort of Celtic spiritual festival that took place in the fall that, you know, you look at the, the way people dress up, you look at the carving of pumpkins, you look at the giving of candy. I could see how all this would be to, to either scare off certain evil spirits or to satisfy some Celtic deities or something like that. But, uh, or it could have stemmed, you know, originated from something to do with, um, you know, food. Uh, you know, a lot of the holidays that we have today seem to uh, be around times of harvest or, you know, uh, gr growing seasons and things like that. Or they usually have something to do with, uh, you know, where the sun is or something like that. So I don't really know where this originated. And I saw this video shared um, and I was like, you know, what? it's getting close to Halloween. This will be a pretty cool thing to learn about. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out what are the Celtic origins of Halloween. The Halloween we celebrate today is filled with iconic traditions of dressing up, trick-or-treating, pumpkin carving, and more. Many around the world welcome it as a recent American export, while those in the US accept it as a time-honored tradition that's been a fabric of our culture for centuries. However, the true origins of Halloween actually date back millennia to the pagan Celtic festival of Soin. Today, so let when? us explore its mysterious history. So As we when? shall see, the traditions of ancient Halloween had much to do with warding against evil spirits of mm. the night. Our sponsor has a similar objective when it comes to combating the foul demons of the interwebs. <laughs> Surfshark VPNs got your back when it comes to the dangers of the internet like surveillance, data mining, theft, and locked content. In addition to top of the Celts anyways. So who were the Celts anyways? Their history is quite enigmatic and dates back to the poorly documented period of the Bronze Age. More specifically, scholars trace their roots to the Central European tribes of the 8th century BC, which developed a somewhat unified language and Hallstatt culture. Over the years, their influence slowly radiated outwards and was succeeded by the Latian culture, which reached as far as the British Isles, Spain, and Turkey. It is this group that would eventually be transformed into what historians now refer to as the Celts. They were never a monolithic entity, but rather a broad, multi-ethnic group of people with similar language, traditions, and religious beliefs. Even this apparent similarity, though, only exists really at the highest levels, with many more differences emerging upon closer inspection. This has led some in academia to even question the validity of placing such a wide group under a single banner. Hmm. For the purposes of this video, though, the term Celtic will suffice to describe the general festival traditions practiced by many related groups. So what about the origins of Halloween? Well, it all started off as an ancient Celtic fall festival. Okay. Their year was divided into two halves, one light and one dark. Hmm. Within this cycle would be many important dates. Four marked the equinoxes and solstices, while another four marked the transition between seasons. Each of these important pillars of the calendar was celebrated by a fire festival. Ancient Soin, our proto-Halloween, took place the night of October 31st and commemorated the advent of winter. It was also the start of a new year when one would bring in the last of the harvest and the cattle. Okay, so its counterpart was the May Festival of Beltin, which heralded the approach of summer. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm partially right both ways. So some kind of something to do with bringing in the last harvest, but also a right there as you're entering winter. Okay. We are not exactly sure when these festivals really came into being, as the Celts only kept an oral history. Therefore, much of their past remains a mystery outside of what gets recorded by the Greeks or Romans and what we can reconstruct from archaeology. The first official record of the Festival of Soin appears on a bronze calendar discovered in the former lands of Gaul and dating back to year 1 AD. Wow. However, we have to assume that the actual holiday had started centuries earlier. 
In fact, investigations of the amount of hostages in Ireland seem to indicate that the roots of the festival went back even further based on a 5,000 year old entrance that would have precisely faced the sun as it rose on the morning of Soin. Wow. So far we've covered how this proto-Halloween was associated with the fall, which is certainly a key aspect of the modern holiday. Mm -hmm. However, we are missing another important ingredient, the spookiness. This comes into play with the ancient Celtic belief that the material and spiritual worlds were only separated by a slender veil. They also believed that this veil could be thinned and even lifted in certain places or at certain times. The festival of Soin was one such example. So wind. On this date, the Pleiades star cluster rose to its height at midnight, coinciding with the arrival of supernatural beings who would wander into the material realm once the sun had set. During this time, the living could also enter their world as well. Doing so, however, was fraught with danger, as one might become lost and never find their way back. Wow. In Celtic mythology, it was thought that during this time, fairies would also travel between their summer hillocks and winter barrows. During this transit, they would bring with them the people who had been captured throughout the year. The magical period of Samhain therefore presented the opportunity to intercept these individuals before they passed onto the other world. Folklore is filled with such stories. Wow. The Scottish legend of Temlin, for instance, tells of how a young maiden rescued her lover from the fairy queen on Soin. Other beings like malevolent spirits and ancestral ghosts also filled the night, further adding to its spooky nature. Thus, we can start to see how the early ideas about Halloween start to take form. Right, yeah. Let's now look more specifically at the Celtic traditions that became associated with the holiday. As we've stated, Soin held great seasonal and religious significance. From the standpoint of the seasons, it was a time to start preparing for winter. The surplus crops would have been harvested and were used to make mead and beer. These wouldn't have lasted long before the advent of refrigeration and would thus be consumed in vast quantities leading up to and especially during the festival. Mm. In addition, a portion of the animals which had been brought in from the pastures would be culled and sacrificed or processed into all kinds of foods. This gave rise to the tradition of hosting giant feasts on the day of Soin to celebrate the start of a new year. Part of these uh -huh. feasts would be set aside for the spirit ancestors who were soon to arrive and who would be granted an honorary place at the table. These social gatherings also served as a vessel for matchmaking. For instance, it was customary to bake fruit loaves with mock rings and hazelnuts inside. Those whose slice contained a ring would soon marry, while those who discovered a nut would remain single. <laughs> Another tradition was for maidens and bachelors to carve their initials on hazelnuts. These would then be tossed into a fire. Uh -huh. The intense heat caused them to pop. As they did so and landed next to one another, couples would be romantically paired off. We see this practice mentioned most prominently in the 14th century writings of the Welsh poets and bards. Initialized hazelnuts could not only predict one's love life, but also one's fate. For instance, people would commonly sign them the evening of Soin and check on them in the morning. If they had mysteriously disappeared, it meant that that person would not live through the following year. Oh wow. The reason for all of this hazelnut obsession is because the hazel tree bore religious significance and was closely associated with the other world. It was particularly sacred in Irish and Scottish mythology where it was said nine magical hazel trees hung over the sacred well of wisdom. Apples were also considered to have magical, prophetic properties. For instance, apples peeled in a continuous strand predicted longevity. For unmarried maidens, an apple peel tossed over the shoulder would land at the shape of the first initial of her future husband. Eating an apple in the mirror while combing hair will conjure an image of their future spouse. Therefore, one can imagine that love was in the air around the fall festival when all manner of fertility rituals were common. It's no surprise then that Soin was considered the most auspicious time for a woman to conceive a child. Wow. Let's now pivot to talk more specifically about the religious aspects of the holiday. As such, we'll have to start with the Druids, who were the leaders of Celtic spiritual and scholarly life. One of their primary roles was performing the rites of Sawin by lighting great sacred bonfires. It appears that these were in part meant to ward off evil spirits. This was done through animal sacrifice and the placement of ancestral skulls around the pit for protection against the dead. In Ireland, the first of these great fires would be lit by the royal court of Tara, who assembled annually to conduct this holy duty. Shortly thereafter, fires would be lit across the lands. Families would then celebrate by dancing through the night and bringing back an ember from the bonfire to light their own hearth and ward off evil spirits. The fear of evil spirits also prompted other customs, which we know and love from our modern Halloween. For instance, Celts apparently took to wearing masks and costumes so as to trick the denizens of the night that emerged on Soin. Uh. Thus disguised, people could move freely without risk of interference by the spirits. 
Oh, so the mask originate, the costumes originate from trying to basically hide from the spirits. Okay. In the event that you did, however, run into an evil spirit, it would be possible to bribe them with treats carried in one's pocket. Ah. The treat thus also emerged from an attempt by the Celts to protect themselves from the supernatural. No kidding! Apparently, okay. it started as a tradition where people would collect eggs, apples, and nuts from their neighbors in the community. Those who gave generously would receive luck and ensure the protection of their crops and livestock for the no coming No kidding, years. okay! Those who made poor offerings, though, would instead be the butt of malevolent tricks and pranks. Over the years, these sow-in traditions would continue to evolve as the Celts interacted with new cultures. For instance, when the Romans took over much of their lands, the fall festival would merge with Rome's own harvest tradition involving Pomona, the goddess of fruitful abundance. Later, as the Catholic Church spread throughout the lands, it attempted to co-opt existing pagan festivals. Mm. For example, in the 7th century AD, the holiday of All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Day or Hallow Mass, was created. While originally scheduled in May, it was later moved by Pope Gregory III to occur on the same day as Sowin. This late October festival retained much of its former traditions, but with an emphasis now on a vigil for the saints and martyrs, rather than ancestors and evil spirits. Hmm. It would continue to evolve, however, over the centuries, and eventually made it to the New World when Europeans brought over their cultural baggage. However, the influence of the Hollow Mass was never that significant, given that most early immigrants, at least to the British colonies, were non-Catholics, though of course harvest festivals remained quite popular. This would change though during the Potato Famine of 1850, when over a million Irish people immigrated to America. They renewed the traditions of the Celtic Harvest Festival and further adapted it to fit the new world. For example, the tradition of carving jack-o'-lanterns is an Irish one. Oh. It started from an old legend of a man named Stringy Jack. He had apparently managed to repeatedly trap the devil, each time freeing him on condition that Jack's soul would not go to hell. With every new deal struck, the duration of the agreement was extended. Eventually Jack died while under these terms, but was denied entry into heaven for his sinful life. However, when he descended to hell, the devil too denied him entry on accord of their agreement. But the devil was still vengeful, and cursed Jack to forever wander the dark lands of the earth with nothing but a burning coal to light his way. The damned man placed the ember into a hollowed out turnip, which earned him the name Jack of the Lantern. Oh my goodness. Jack Lantern. Oh wow, okay. It was an Irish tradition to honor this legend by carving out turnips and placing candles in them. No However, kidding. when they came to America, they found that the native pumpkins were far more suited for the task, which is what has given rise to that our makes own sense. modern tradition. Wow. I hope that as you celebrate your Halloween, you appreciate the rich history of its Celtic, Roman, and Christian past. It will also be important to remember that traditions are always evolving, and whatever festivities you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors choose to do will play a part in shaping its future. A huge thanks is owed to our supporters. Wow. That's, um... Wow. So, Halloween is actually, it started from way back in the day, and it's merged with many different traditions, and... Wow. Okay. I bet all holidays are really like that, though. You know, all holidays come from somewhere and somewhere and somewhere else. Um, this was interesting. I'm glad I checked this out. Now I understand that, you know, why, why people carve, carve pumpkins and why uh, we give candy to kids and dress up and all that stuff. And why it's such a spooky, supposed to be a spooky time of year and things like that. It'll be interesting to see where Halloween and obviously other holidays go as well over the next few centuries, you know, I mean, I'm sure they'll, you know, they'll change and merge again and it'll be something completely different two, 300 years from now. Um, but yeah, this was interesting guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to leave your comments and suggestions and don't forget to subscribe to continue to join me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry until next time. Peace.